Right, we're back in the main arena now, and out there is Police Constable Terry Arnett, who's going to be commentating on a display by the West Midlands Police. I'm sure you're going to enjoy it, so let's hand over and see what Terry's got to say. There will be one big uh, dog unit, so uh, if you'd like to give them a round of applause at the end, I'll be grateful. Entering the ring now, we've got a number of dogs that are part of our breed scheme. Uh, at the front there, we've got Young Daly. He's about eight months of age. Followed by Susie, who is a donation spaniel. Uh, a member of the public donated that dog to us a few weeks ago. So it's quite a testing day for Susie today. Um, this is a, a strange environment for her to come to and see so many people. She seems to be coping quite nicely. Followed by her, we've got Alfie. Again, he was another donation spaniel. And then closely followed by them is Bandit, who is a dog bred by us. Um, he's named after a charity. And uh, followed by Bandit, we have Van. Uh, coming up behind, we've got the Staffordshire Officer, one of her drugs dogs, and Jasper, one of our English Springer Spaniels that we've bred as well. And then following up, last but not least, is our friend Dan there. Dan is uh, nominated for Friends for Life, so if you fancy voting for Dan, then uh, pick up a leaflet from the dog stand in Hall 3, and I'm sure Dan will be extremely grateful. So that's uh, some of the puppies that uh, we've bred or had donated to us recently. Once uh, the dogs have gone round the ring a final time, what we're going to do is we're going to show you uh, initially how we would assess a puppy, one of the donation young puppies, um, to see whether or not we would deem that suitable to be a, a working police dog within the force. And then from that we'll be looking at uh, some of the, uh, the older puppies that we've got in the ring there and showing you how we develop those uh, into their role as operational police dogs. So Susie's uh, found the environment there, North Sandy. We, uh, we all carry bags. <laughs> As I say, that's quite a testing thing for Susie today. She was only donated to the breed scheme uh, last week. Uh, she was with a family in Birmingham and uh, as most people find out that when they take spaniels as puppies, they start to trash the house and climb on the furniture and be totally unruly. So the family came to speak to me, uh, as I say, less than a week ago. And, and from our assessment, we were really happy with what we saw. Um, and as I've explained, this is quite a testing environment for Susie. She's not seen this many people before or been exposed to an environment such as Crufts. So um, the older dogs are just going to leave the ring for a short moment. And uh, in the ring there now you can see is my colleague Dave Raymond. Myself and Dave, as I say, we run the breed scheme at West Midlands Police. And it's our job to uh, succession plan for all the future police dogs of the force. Um, our breed scheme's national, so we provide dogs to lots of other forces. And we've worked closely with the military and other people. So our dogs tend to go all over the country now. Uh, and it's something that's expanding for us quite nicely. So what Dave's doing here, he's just testing the play drive in the dogs. He's seen that they'll engage with people, that they're happy to play with toys. All our uh, training is based on toy rewards, so toys play an extremely important part of what we do. Obviously for each type of breed, it's slightly different. So with Daly, we're looking at whether he's possessive, whether he's happy to chase and hold things. And with uh, Alfie the Spaniel, whether he's got uh, a nice hunting drive, where he's going to chase the ball and retrieve it and bring it back to us. And as you'll see in a few moments time, once these dogs leave, this progresses on towards the full trained dog. So here we've got Alfie now, Dave's going to agitate him with the ball. And as we can see, Alfie's quite happy to pick the ball up and uh, he keeps hold of it, which is a good sign, he's nice and possessive over that. So, coming back into the ring now, we should have... Uh, Police Dog Bandit, he's named after a charity, the Pilgrim Bandits. Uh, they've got a website if you'd like to look at them. And uh, there we've got Van as well. These two dogs are just over 12 months of age now. And uh, the officers that are with, or these, sorry, these two puppy walkers that are helping us today, this is Matt on my left and Dave on my right. Dave has puppy walk Bandit uh, from about, is it about 12 weeks, Dave, was it, something like that? About 12 weeks of age, Dave uh, walked Bandit for us. Uh, Bandit's been allocated to an officer now, ready for uh, future training. He knows the game, he stole. <laughs> and as I said, we want unruly dogs, we want the hooligans of the dog world, so uh, that was all planned, that was. <laughs> we work the dogs in harnesses so that, to, one, it doesn't put pressure on their necks too much with them pulling on the lead, and secondly, it can help us to encourage a dog that's reluctant to bark. Clearly, uh, barking's an important role of a police dog, 
One, to alert to its handler, and secondly, to, to make a presence in a public environment if needed. So by us using the harnesses, we're able to prevent the dogs having a bad association with barking in training. And that's one of the main reasons we use the harness. There we can see Bandit behaving quite nicely, and Dave's agitated him with a small pillow, which he's now uh, got a nice firm grip on. Okay, and he's going to move across to Van now, who's obviously getting a little bit more excited. So Dave will wait for a bark or squeak in Van's case at the moment, and he'll get a reward for that behaviour so that we build up an association of the exercise. And this will move on again, as I say, to the next level, which you'll see shortly. So as the helper in the middle there, that's stalking the dog, stimulating the dog, giving it excitement. It's all a game. So all the dog is after is its toy reward. Once we've uh, got the dog nice and fixed on the pillow, we'll start moving into things like teaching the dog to chase and detain the person. So here Dave's got what we call a soft sleeve. It's not as firm as the, uh, the, the, the sleeves that we'd use for a bigger dog. And Dave, again, just teasing the dog, teaching the dog to target the correct equipment in the right place. And you'll see in a minute Dave will build that up to, uh, to actually put it on his arm. The stick that Dave's got is not to strike the dog, it's just to give the uh, dog a bit of agitation, to make it more excitable. To see that the dog's focused on the person and not the equipment. So the dog's not for striking, it's just for agitating the animal. And here we can see Bandit chasing and taking a nice firm bite on Dave's arm. And this, I say, is a young dog who hasn't done any formal training yet, but just development training with myself and Dave. So we let him win the toy, let him be proud, he runs around quite pleased with what he's done. Dave will ask him to leave because he knows the dog really well, and as he takes liberties as always, old bandit. And what we're going to do now is show the dog uh, bark and hold at Dave. So this is where uh, the helper's going to run, tease the dog and stop, and the dog won't bite, or shouldn't bite, he'll just bark at Dave till he's rewarded. And then once he's done what he's asked to do, he, uh, he gets a nice reward that he likes. So there we have Bandit. So what we're going to see now is that's uh, how we would start to train our dogs. So from puppies, seven to eight weeks, we move right up to 12 months, which you've seen with Bandit there. Bandit's ready to go on a course later on this year with a new handler he's just been allocated to. So now what we're going to see is a, a fully trained licensed police dog. So entering the ring shortly will be PC Dan Thomas with his new police dog Zane. As I say, Dan's been nominated for Friends for Life with his old dog Yanis, but this is his new dog Zane. Zane is a fully operational police dog. He's been operational now for uh, several months and he's two years of age and has already had a lot of success on the streets of the West Midlands. So here we're going to run through a set of criminal work. Dave's going to run off as a fleeing criminal, and hopefully Zane's going to chase and uh, detain him. The officer challenges to give the person an opportunity to surrender. If, they, if it continues to make uh, good their escape, then the dog can be sent to deploy and uh, catch the person for us. Once the person's been detained, then obviously uh, our use of force is over, and so the officer has to call the dog back in a nice controlled manner. Obviously if the person running off hears Dan challenge or another officer challenge and decides to give up, then we have to have options available there and the dog has to understand that he can't always bite. So in this instant, Dave's going to run off, he'll be challenged by the officer, he'll stop running and the dog should stand off and bark at him, like you've seen Bandit do a minute ago. And then again, once called, back to his handler. Just to show you how much control these dogs actually have, uh, we also train what we call an emergency stop. So in this instance, circumstances could change, the person's fleeing, they will continue to flee, but the dog has to stop when the handler asks it. So we're going to try and demonstrate that now. So there we can see a dog in full flight. 
just about to make a bite and call back to his handler. So that's a nice, uh, nice exercise demonstrated by Dan. Obviously now uh, we also have to deal with people that are slightly more aggressive than uh, what Dave's demonstrated there. So he's going to arm himself now with a soft stick. It's a padded stick. Dave only hurts himself, not the dog. Uh, we don't strike our dogs, they're our partners, they're part of our family, so obviously we want to look after them. But unfortunately some of the people that we come up against do strike the dogs and do hit out the dogs, so we do have to train for that. So Dave's going to be very good at this, he always does it every year at Crufts and uh, becomes a very angry man. He'll start thrashing his stick around and Dan will deal with him. So we've got the stick back, that's the start. And we've caught Dave by the look of it, that's good. Obviously that's a, a really high drive exercise for the dog, he's been agitated by the stick, he's been encouraged to come and bite, and again he's released instantly when asked and gone back to his handler. So a nice round of applause for Dan, as I say Dan's up for friends for life, so I will keep plugging him, and if uh, you wish to vote for him then uh, I'm sure you've seen the adverts by now. We're going to bring Bandit back now, and uh, Bandit's going to uh, demonstrate some of the property exercises that we do. Uh, as I say, Bandit's been run on by Dave for quite a few, uh, for over just about 12 months now for us, uh, as part of a volunteer scheme that we run within West Midlands. Dave is a member of the public who uh, acts as a, a puppy walker for us, and the role of the puppy walker is extremely important to our breed scheme. This is Dave's own property, so if it gets broken, he'll be paying for it, not me. And what we're going to show you here is Dave's done a lot of work with this dog and taught him to go out and passively indicate on property that could have been discarded by an offender such as Dave. Hopefully what Bandit will do is he's going to come out and he'll lie down by the property and Dave can recover his own items. So I've placed those out in the ring for you. And in Dave's own time, I'll get out of the way because he's just been biting, he'll uh, hopefully come out and lie down by the property. Get on Bandit, go on. Told you. So there we go, he's indicated the property. It's important that the dogs try not to, well we teach the dogs not to, in, not to uh, interfere with the property, the main reason being is that can assist us with an inquiry. And as you can see, despite all the things that Bandit's been doing, he's a very sociable animal. and probably be on the stand later if you want to come down and stroke him. So we've got one more, you've got to get your phone back Dave and then you can carry on mate. So we're going to send him off to search again. This dog's been kenneled with us for a few months, uh, and then, as I say, he's only recently gone to his handler, so Dave hasn't seen him for a few weeks because he's been, uh, been on holiday. So it just shows you that he has a very good understanding of this exercise because, because of the training that Dave's done with him. And he'll get a ball reward for that. So he always gets something back that he likes. As I say, toys are an extremely important part of our training. So a nice round of applause for Bandit and Dave there. So that's the, uh, that's the role of the general purpose police dog pretty much covered there uh, for the time being in our demonstration. So what I'd like to do now is I'd like to uh, perhaps um, introduce you to some of our search dogs. Um, as I say, West Midlands Police uh, will take donation dogs, that's pets generally that are, that are unruly in the home, but we do breed our own Springer Spaniels. So I'm going to invite uh, some helpers into the ring now, we're going to put some cases out for us. And then hopefully you're going to see two of our uh, drugs dogs work. Just uh, collecting some props. Hello. Okay, so here's our helpers coming out. They're going to lay uh, a nice big cross in the ring for us. These, uh, these guys are helpers with us today, they're puppy walkers, so we'll show them how we've packed up last night when we've uh, been here practicing. We're going to lay an big cross out in the hall, from corner to corner. Okay, and entering the ring now, we've got our friends from Staffordshire Police. This is Julie with her dog, and we've got uh, 
Alfie, and we've got uh, Russ Martin here with Jasper from uh, West Midlands, please. So they're going to uh, systematically, between them, they're going to come out, search this arena, and hopefully locate the two uh, bags that we've put out. You saw at the start the other dog called Alfie, and it's one of our puppies. Um, as long as the dog's got a very high drive to recover the ball, then most of the spaniels that we work with um, can, can go on to work in, in a number of different roles that we have with uh, specialist dogs with the spaniels breed. Um, in this instance, we've got two drugs dogs, but there are dogs trained to find explosive search and also uh, CSI dogs, which are crime scene search dogs. The dogs are going to work systematically around each item, and when they do find, they should adopt a nice steady position, very similar to what you saw Bandit do. So I think Russ has located something over there. And again, it's the same type of uh, exercise as you've seen with the property. This is just a property search for the dog, but with the target odour included. And I think uh, Alfie from Staffordshire is uh, located as well. Excellent. So I'm going to invite my friends back in to uh, help pick up the cases, and whilst they're doing that, if I could have ten volunteers, please, from the, from the audience in front of me, uh, if they'd like to come down and help. If we've got any children in the audience, that'd be, uh, be nice. So if, uh, if we've got 10 volunteers, have we we've got 10 people? How many have we got? And if I could have five people walk down towards me over here, that'd be really good, please. Got five in front of me here, yeah? We've got our 10 volunteers, come on then, quickly. No? Can we have five people here, please, and five people over there so everyone can see? And two lines, please. Come form a nice line down here for me, please. That's brilliant. If you just want to stand in front of me, that'd be great. If you just want to stand quite a bit apart, if you want to space yourself out across the ring for me. Brilliant. Okay, do you want to school stand it? Stay there. Do you want to stand it? Please? Brilliant, that's super. Okay, what we've got here now, we've got PC Russ Martin with Jasper again. Jasper's also trained as a pass what we call a passive screening dog. So this dog is a dog that would be deployed to sort of nightclub queues or that scenario to try and find substances that uh, people may be carrying illegally in and around the environment. So here Russ has got a nice uh, static queue. Okay, and then this, is cr this crew here, they're going to start walking off for me in a nice straight line back towards the stage. Well, stand still a minute, please, if you can. Stand still. You just want to keep walking around in a circle for me? Just keep following around. Once Russ is uh, finished with this crew, we've got a nice moving crowd here. So here Russ is uh, walking down the street, and he's come across people moving around and hopefully he indicates on people uh, carrying stuff they shouldn't have. Leave them, trip them up if you can. Excellent. So thank you very much for our volunteers. If you'd like to see our friend over there, he's got a little present for you for thanking us. They've been kindly donated by Royal Cannon, uh, the pet food suppliers who uh, help feed our dogs. So they've uh, kindly donated a rucksack for your help. So if you'd like to see my colleague over there, he'll be able to give you that. Okay, great. And uh, thanks again to our uh, two helpers here. Come here. He does this every year, does Dave? <laughs> Stole her handbag again. 
What we're going to try and show you now, though, is after an incident like that, there can be scenes, uh, crime scenes left. So uh, if that was a more violent incident, for example, there could be traces of blood left. So what I'm going to do now, uh, Russ has quickly put Jasper away. I'm going to hand the mic over to Jasper, uh, to Russ even, not the dog. We are multi-trained. And uh, I'm going to get my own dog, Smithy, who's a crime scene search dog. Smithy's a, a four-year-old Labrador who basically uh, was donated by the guide dogs to us. Um, they don't like to say he failed, he's just found a different, a different career path. Um, and he now works with us as a crime scene search dog. In uh, the most severe cases, we have been deployed to look for human remains, so that's the extreme of our work. But he can find small amounts of uh, human blood um, if left at a crime scene. So I'm going to uh, hand you over to Russ, or just explain as I go through what I'm doing. Folks, Terry uh, has worked with uh, Smithy now um, for possibly two, two and a half years. Uh, as Terry said, Smithy was uh, a guide dog, decided that it wasn't the uh, career path he wished to go down and instead decided he wanted to put his efforts to good use and come and work for Huss. Um, he loves the work he does. As you'll see, he's extremely committed and extremely talented dog. Um, can't say much about the handler, but the, the dog is very, very good. Um, he's three and a half years old, and we, he's one of four um, crime, detect, uh, crime scene dogs that we deal with. Um, he's very, very good, and he works under not the best circumstances. You'll see the scanning um, system is very similar to that with the drugs, what you've just seen. The dog will methodically go along, uh, search each carpet tile, just normal carpet tiles, until he comes to the one with a, uh, what he thinks is the crime scene. This is replicating something like a, um, a murder scene or a wounding where we, we can't find the scene. That's his indication. He's quite happy, and he, when Terry moves away from the scene, he won't move. As you can see, his tail's wagging, he gets his ball reward, and it's all done just for a ball. He's quite happy that uh, he's got what he starts to look for. <clears throat> Terry and Smithy work uh, throughout Britain uh, whenever it's needed. They've worked on a, quite a few high-profile cases uh, of late, uh, cases you would have read about in the news where we're trying to find scenes, we're trying to find um, weapons that have uh, been used, and we're also, unfortunately, trying to find uh, bodies. As a result of that, their work isn't their best, but they do a grand job uh, whilst they're doing it. I'll now hand you back over to your MC. Thanks, ladies and gents. We're uh, just about coming near to the end of our uh, demonstration now. Oh, he's back again. Right, every year he does this. Can you, can you leave the ring? What's it? Did you call me Baldy? Can you leave the ring, please? Excuse me. Can we, have a, can we have a police dog, please, to deal with this person again? Again, we've got police dog uh, Zane with, Danis, with uh, Dan. And there we have Zane out to, uh, to detain Dave one last time. Obviously, uh, this is, a, again, Zane's acted there in a really high drive situation with a nice big target suit to bite at. So, uh, again, some excellent control demonstrated by Dan. <laughs> uh, that's about it, ladies and gentlemen. I'd like to thank you for watching, unless, of course, you'd like to see Dave uh, attacked one more time. And I thought he'd say that. <laughs> you sure? <laughs> so, uh, Feel free, Dan. <laughs> so we have Zane again, uh, doing what he likes best. I'd just like to invite all uh, my colleagues back into the ring for one final walk round, so you can uh, give them all a nice round of applause. I'd just like to point out, we're all volunteers, we're not a full-time display team, and I'm certainly not a natural compare, but I thank you very much for listening, and uh, thank you very much.
Well done there, Felipe. Big round of applause. Just shows the amount of work that goes into training these dogs because it's not natural what they do. They are trained to a very high level indeed. And uh, I'm always very impressed by the, the police dogs. The control that the handlers have over the dogs. I'm particularly impressed with the uh, release of a, 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 a captured or a cornered criminal when they're, they're biting hard on the arm. And just one word, and they release and they're away. They're, they are remarkable dogs. Beautifully trained, very well handled, and deserved all the applause that they got. Well, we have a lot of stuff going on here in the main arena all day, which, of course, we're streaming here on this uh, webcast. And I uh, don't know how long you've been with us, whether you've just joined. If you've just joined, well, stay with us as long as you like. But all day, every day of Crufts, we cover whatever is happening here. And uh, I'm sure there will be something to entertain, uh, entertain you over the next four days, culminating, of course, in our wonderful coverage of the best in show competition which is really what crofts is all about but all these other activities are of equal importance to this fantastic dog show it really is massive and it's always a great pleasure to be here well in just a moment it's just being set up we're about to see a dog activities display which will show another side of many different dogs and dave ray is down there in the arena talking about it so uh, i'm going to let him uh, tell you precisely what's going on He's a grandfather, uh, Mary Ray's husband, of course, and uh, been responsible for all sorts of uh, agility developments and the popularization of the magnificent sport that agility is. And uh, let's hear what he's saying. He's setting up the next element here in the main ring. 